Before we get into the video, I'd like to let y'all know that I'm doing a giveaway for an LTI Argo Atlas. In order to participate, all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment in any video between now and the end of December. Let's get into this video. To ensure fun gameplay and interactive sandbox activity, and also make sure all the mission stuff is there. Basically, we're building a toolkit. So let's look at some of the things that we need to keep in mind as we are making that toolkit. First and foremost, we've got our art style and branding. We've got things like Frontier for our settlements. We've got high tech for the emergency shelters, but also utilitarian like our bunkers and distribution centers. The richer the data, the richer these locations will be. Secondly, they all have a function. We've got mining for our mining outposts, farming for the farmsteads, or just places where people live. The function of the place will define the way the place looks as well and its form. And last but not least, the people as well, the faction and their loadouts. We've got lawful people like the new Citizens for Prosperity in Pyro, unlawful such as Xenofred, and sometimes not even no, no one. And the place needs to look a bit, you know, derelict. In different places, you'll find different people. So, now that we've made our toolkit and we've defined all this new stuff, let's start building thousands of locations. Yes, I said thousands. So, to avoid the same issue of working on directly in the planet, I'd like to introduce to you Starkitect. <laughs> what Starkitect allows us to do is directly on a planetary scale, scatter all these new libraries and modules and assets and no longer work directly on the planet. And it uses the same logical rule set as our emergent biomes. And we, it also gives us full control over the data that we set on these locations. So expect locations in places where they make sense. Let's kind of look at all these, this new Genesis data and all these new libraries and, and chuck it into Starkitect and see what it gives us. As you can see, we're now able to make full-size locations and they will com look completely different based on where you find them. The layouts are control controlled by the rules and it will reflect its place in the verse. We've got farms, mining outposts, but even our older locations, such as the bunkers that you find on Stanton. So, let's look at an example and kind of use the tool to really, you know, make a location. We can define the rules as I've mentioned a couple times by now. So for our mining outpost, it wants to be near a resource. We can specify what this resource needs to be. But we can also give suggestions where sometimes you'd find it here and sometimes you wouldn't. If the location has refineries, it might want to be near water to refine the resources. Then secondly, we can define what buildings should be there. So obviously we need mining buildings houses for people to live as well, and even power buildings that we can leverage with the resource network. Starkitect will intelligently figure out where to place these and what needs to be at the location. Next up, farms. It's rules, well, temperature. Not every plant can live in every temperature, but the same with soil type. Only certain plants can be in certain grounds. And then we can query the seed map to determine what plants you would find there. What are the harvestables? As for the targets, again, farm buildings, obviously, power buildings, houses, but even animals, such as our beloved quasi-grazers. And last but not least, derelict ships. We've got these all over the place currently. Rules, well, they'd be close to an anti-air because they would be shut down, but even in harsh flight conditions, such as mountains or low visibility, you probably most commonly find them. Targets, well, Crash ship parts, of course. Sometimes you'd find the full remains of a javelin, and the other time you might just find the nose of a starfare laying around. So, let's talk about coherency. Sure, we can scatter all these locations everywhere on the planet, and you'll find them in places they make sense, but we can do better. You don't just want to find an outpost completely on its own, right? We want to make sure it really feels like people have built their lives here. So, let's talk about some missing bits. We want to tell tighter stories, such as 
the people's lives, but also logical exploration. If I find one thing, I expect to find something similar or something else nearby. We also need more data control. What defines one mining outpost being different from the, el from the other ones aside from the harvestables? And also give the narrative development. Make sure you know people build near rivers, on mountains. They build near town halls. They build near distribution centers. So to hit that bit of our benchmark, we make sure that locations are near each other and group them together. The effect it gives is a fully developed landscape with vistas and points of interest all over. And we group them together in what we like to call a cluster like this one that has 13 locations. Let's talk about clusters. Clustering means generating locations near other locations. So, for example, if you find a distribution center, just like in the verse currently, I would find forward operating bases next to them. But if you go even further out, you'd find mining outposts to funnel those resources to the FOBs. Go out even further, you'd find caves around them, because that's where they might find some of the gems. And then we can even specify the data at, on a cluster level. The, all of the factions that live at this whole cluster, any mining outpost, that would be the same people, but also what commodities they sell to find on what resource you'd find. So let's look at an example of the clusters. We have our mining cluster. Again, we can define what rules we should have. Rules, well, near a resource, just like our mining outpost, but also it needs to be on a lawful planet. We can target on a planetary scale where they would need to be. They need protection. As for the targets, well, caves, mining outposts, but even trade posts. Let's go to the other side of the spectrum. Before I do so, I forgot data. We can, on a cluster level, specify, again, what mineral commodities, but what also what harvestable types you'd find are in, the, in that region. Now let's look at the other side of the spectrum, an unlawful cluster. What rules? Well, they need to be far away from any other cluster because they want to be isolated and do their evil deeds on their own. And also on an unlawful planet, such as somewhere in the Pyrus system. For the targets, outlaw outposts, crash ships because they would shoot them down, and also ruins from just places they just completely overrun. The data on this one? You'd find specific loadouts, and they'll be using weapons that you wouldn't find any in other legal system. And these weapons will be sold at the shops in these regions. So, now that we have a cluster, let's go even bigger. Just like our locations, we can put clusters near other clusters, and we group them together, ranging between 10 to 15 locations each. And we group this into what we call a sector, like this one, that has about 120 locations. <laughs> However, on a planetary scale, we can define how many sectors we should have, with each their own data and persona. And every single one of these locations is now ready for the mission system to hook up and give you gameplay, and for you to find a bunch of places on your own. And just on this side of the planet, can you guess the number? We've got about 3,042 locations. And again, this means as architect, we're just able to, on a planetary scale, just define how many locations we need, what you find there, and to just give that full identity. Thank you for listening, and I won't just see you in the verse, but I'll see you in a denser verse.